Welcome to the Beyond Cinema studio up here at Sundance, presented by Slobs.com. Yatsek, Louis, Kevin, Mark, um, the team from Shopping. Firstly, congratulations, Mark, being back here, guys. I mean, co-writing, directing this film. It's your first feature. How does it feel to have that under your belt and have this sort of a kind of a, a validation for it, I guess? Oh, it's been really interesting, actually. We've, we've just been doing all of our publicity stuff right up until now. It just feels like we've stopped today, actually. Uh, it's been a big journey, so yeah, it feels great. It feels like we're actually sort of on the other side of the work, if you like. Um, but it's great to come back to Sundance after such a great time here last time. Yeah. yeah. The success of Six Dollar Fifty Man as a short. Do you think that that's prepared you for this? Do you think that that was like a just an experience you had to have, like going through the fact, like doing yeah. those projects? Yeah, totally. We, you know. We, we really wanted to dive into shorts uh, years ago. Me and Mark have talked about it since we started working together in the early 20s. You know, and um, you know, it was always a, a vehicle to get to feature films. And you know, one thing we learned about feature films um, off the back of short films is that really there, is, <laughs> there isn't that much difference. You're telling a story, it's a different uh, form in that it's longer, but the amount of pre-production, you, know, you have to elongate that. The, ju the journey itself, it's like, it's, what, it's like five, six short films. I think we, we were saying the other day, we, we, uh, you know, with a short film, you shoot for a week and you have two weeks prep. With the feature film, I think we had two or three weeks prep yeah. and a six week shoot. And it's funny because on the way to the feature, we were talking as we were doing our shorts going, when we get to the feature, it'll all be different. We'll have way more time. Oh, so, yeah, man. You know, yeah, you know so not true. Dreaming, dreaming. Is, it, is it weird, like making films in New Zealand, like obviously that we hear about the Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, all this sort of stuff. If you're making a film now with that sort of production going on at the same time, is it hard for you guys to crew up and, or do you guys, or did your guys stay with you from the shorts and are you kind of immune from, from having to worry about the production resources side? I think, I think we're lucky in New Zealand. There's, a, there's a, like a hub of uh, people that work in the industry that don't want to work on The Hobbit or mm. you know, those bigger style of films. And what it actually does is gives us world-class facilities in Wellington, like I think we were mixing our film, and, and we could hear the Hobbit grumbling Next down the hallway. Next door, orcs screaming, and it was they, horrific. They moved out of their mixing theatre, and we moved in. So yeah, and, and there is that. I think that's a cool thing. Um, a lot of people have, you know, been involved in those bigger projects for what te a decade now, and have, you know, cut their teeth. It's like some of them won Oscars, like uh, you know Mike, Mike Hopkins, who sadly passed away, uh, two-time Academy Award winner. He was mixing our film, and he loved this story more than the others uh, uh, because he part said he passed away shortly afterwards because it was just down to earth because it was a, a simple story a real kiwi tale as opposed to orcs and rowing riders you know yeah, it was yeah. just really raw and so you know th there are people and in, in our crews in New Zealand that really love getting down to duty it, it's a kiwi tale and i found like in a, in a sense but then it's also like an oliver twist sense you know yatek's character very much a fagin kind of takes in these kind of uh, you know, odd assortment of people and, and has them do things for him that are probably a little below the radar, a little less than, than, uh, than sanitary, but, you know, it's still a family, right? It's absolutely a family. Uh, and I think the, the part of it, <coughs> the, or certainly the, the protagonist part, the you know, young, young guy who, who comes under the influence of these forces, you know, push-pull forces, we can uh, recognize those moments in our lives that where we, most of us, I imagine, as certainly I have, <laughs> you know, felt it could have gone many different ways. Yeah. Thankfully, it hasn't quite. But you know, it's nice to to revisit a, a place like that. I, I think that's universal. Uh, but the other thing, I mean, that's exactly that's universal. But then on a on a New Zealand level. The classic films out of New Zealand over the last however many years, maybe 20 years, is like the element of domestic violence keeps appearing and reappearing. Mm. Now, is that because it's a reality or is that because it's just a, a dramatic choice? I, I, I think that, uh, you know, in New Zealand, we, we, all, we all actually accept locally in NZ that we, we do have a problem with domestic violence. Um, I mean, internationally, it's across the board. but. I think our statistics are pretty uh, are pretty bad, you know, they're right up there. And, you know, our, our approach, 
with our work because it comes from real raw experiences is not to shy away from that. It's better to out it and get it out there and have us talking about it and, and having people that have experienced it. You know, and sadly there's a lot of them be able to recognise, you know, themselves in the story and, you know, it's out from under the, uh, out, of, out of the closet, out from under the carpet. And, you know, we can address it then. But while it's just sitting in the papers as statistics and yeah. people are quiet and, and don't feel it's, it's, it's been not so much accepted but conveyed through all forms of media, you know, we're not really dealing with it. So, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty on the jaw with that one. I think we both feel the same way too, like if we're going to tell our stories. Well, we're not telling our stories of, you know, the scenes don't play out, how, how we kind of remember a lot of stuff from when we were growing up. When yeah. it, how can you hold back on the language and have, have the same story, for, for instance? You know, there is a lot of kind of language in our film, but that's kind of the way it was, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, both Run and this film have the abusive dad to, a, to an extent, the cassette recorder being utilised by the kids, and of course, kids being the central figures in this. Each time you've gone with new faces, Kevin, I mean, this is your first movie, right? Yeah, I've never even really acted before, so it was like... <laughs> Meanwhile, yatsek has been on every Baz Luhrmann picture for the last however long. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know how many he was in until I read like the description. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> you got up to Sunday, yeah. you're reading his bio. And just, yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so what was it like when you first met these guys? Was that because you wanted to be an actor and you were looking for opportunities? Or, or did they just kind of find you and have a chat and decide... Uh, they found me eating butter chicken in a food court one day because they were also in line um, just behind me. And um, yeah, I must have looked the part, or the back of my head must have looked the part because yeah, they were behind me in line. And they ended up knocking, well, tapping on my shoulder as I left and just asked me. And I just thought, why not? You know, I've never really done it before, I might as well. And it opened new doors, which is good. And from now, well, do you think those doors will stay open or do you think you're happy to go back to doing what you were doing before? Or is this like now? what you're looking at as a career and... Oh, well, that, they'll stay open. I mean, there's, I always like to not put all my eggs in one basket, I suppose, in a sense. But, um, yeah, the doors will always be open. And I'm always, like, I know I connect now. Why? Well, I like to think that. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about him? Uh, well... You just you really love butter chicken? <laughs> <laughs> there was that. <laughs> really, we just went back to our local mall. I mean, we went to our old haunts to look for faces, really, yeah. in the crowd. Yeah. And then we pulled them together and then we had had auditions, but Kevin, he, he fitted the role like a glove. You yeah. know, there's there's a l lots of part, parts of the film that, that Kevin connects with and, and we found that through the process. Yeah. Um, it was a natural fit. I think too, like, you know, the way we, we cast a lot, um, you know, obviously we work with a lot of street cast and we, we also work with, you know, seasoned actors, you know, they've been around the world and that evening, um, and particularly with street cast, um, we, we look for personage, you know, we look for people with the right texture of personality, you know, in a way, um, you know, Kevin had a similar bolshiness and cockiness that uh, I guess I had when I was younger and Willie had, you know, within the film and it, and it stood out and he's intelligent and, you know, like he was trying to direct us at one stage. It's it 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 bloody terrible. But, you know, it's that kind of personage. You go, great, let's, let's get in, let's culture it, let's, let's teach him all the, the colour we call it back home in New Zealand. But all, all of the you know set skills and experience that he needs, but essentially we're drizzling li lines over the top, yeah. you know, and, and he's just trying to live in the moment. The kids of each of your films, the two shorts and this one, are the stars of the film. Do you feel a sense of responsibility to what happens to them after you're after you're done? Yeah, 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 we do, yeah. and uh, and sometimes it's hard to manage because you know as you guys and, and we we learning you know the film becomes a beast. You get dragged in all sorts of different directions. But, you know, we've tried to follow up with everyone and, you know, I think it was cool at Six Dollar Fifth Man we sent, you know, um, Oscar Van Die Connor who played the Six Dollar Fifth Man Kid Andy yeah. off to Japan on a junket with his mother and, you know. This is, this is the part where I think we get to pay back the hardship in yeah. many ways. They don't, you know, they don't get a lot for being in the film. In fact, Kevin had to give up his day job during the film and then lost his job yeah. pretty much straight after the film. He's not, he's not getting... Uh, you know, his weekly wage while he comes here, although everything's kind of paid for, so it's tough, you know. Um, but we, we appreciate that and we kind of do as much as we can. I think uh, Kevin was living at Louis' house during the film, which was cool. So uh, it's, it's kind of like a, hopefully it's like a family atmosphere because that's kind yeah. of how we work. Yeah. yeah. And what's happened to the, what's happened to your little brother in, from the movie? Do you guys hang out? Uh, well, I haven't really had much because he lived um, quite a while away from me. 
So like, um, it's kind of hard traveling, and my car's actually broken down at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so no, I haven't had that much time to catch up with them, but I'm sure when I go back, like, there'll be a lot of those moments. That, because I mean, you were both amazing, and that kid's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just, he's just, I mean, he's so lovable, yeah. and that's what draws you back into the house many times, is just, you know, you just love your little brother. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that magic really plays nicely, and, um, yeah, I mean, you know, just uh, congratulations. Yatsek, what, what, talk about magic. What can you tell us about Great Gatsby coming out? You're yeah. going to have a big year this year with this film and with well, the there, There's film. actually a, a bit of uh, mixed, um, uh, mixed messages there. I didn't end up being in the film. Oh. I, it, it, it's just a strange story. And in, when I tell a story in Poland, they don't believe it. <laughs> I had to pull out from Great Gatsby to be in this uh, medical drama in Poland. And said, what? And it was, it, it would have been a fantastic uh, thing to be involved again. Yeah. Uh, next time. Yeah. Maybe you can help Kevin out with a new car. I, I <laughs> know a thing or two about cars. <laughs> I can help him with his old car. <laughs> Very cool. Congratulations on the film. It's a magical little creature and uh, wish you all the luck with it. And uh, good start tonight, Egyptian theatre. How does that feel, like the morning of? Butterflies or cool and calm? Oh, uh, to be quite honest, a little, uh, we sort of, what, not, what, makeup for the partner back home, <laughs> doing my hair, what's going, you know, it's a little bit crazy. We're just a couple of guys from the coast, all three of us, and I'm sure Yasek, well, Yasek was going camping coast, with yeah. the kids in Aussie <laughs> before he got in, it's all about it. But, you know, we're, we're loving it, we're really, really excited. And I, I think, you know, um, having come here before, me and, me and LB are a little bit more kind of, aware of what's what's going on but it's still really humbling to, to be in the fold and you know to be invited back into the family. It's, a, it's such a laid-back festival I think kind of yeah. it helps a lot to yeah. sort of calm the nerves a bit yeah and it's we got a full-on day today you know jam-packed with interviews and things like that so last yeah. night we had a bit of time to think about it and uh, <laughs> I was nervous last night but not so much today. It's really. quite funny we were in two single beds <laughs> it was like it was like the Waltons. <laughs> What are you going to ask tomorrow? I don't know. Man. You should have uh, you should have pulled the, the the covers up. You could have invited him in, given him a little, <laughs> given him a little cuddle. That's another interview. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, wishing you continued success, guys. Congratulations.